reached the uh, tip of Salima Island and now we're going to change course and start heading towards the Corinth Canal for the first time and we're hoping the wind direction will allow us to be able to sail. Well, we've got about three more hours to reach the Corinth Canal and uh, a little bit of a thunderstorm brewing over there. Fortunately it's going to blow right past us but it's certainly thunder and lightning over Athens. After a great sail yesterday from uh, Marina Zeus in Piraeus in Athens, we've now come across to the entrance of the Corinth Canal and uh, there have been an absolute armada of boats waiting to go through. This is the very first day it's been open for the 2023 season and a lot of boats gone through. We're on the next batch, we hope, uh, going through and uh, we're looking forward to oh, just under an hour, I guess, of uh, through this iconic canal. So Adam Paisley there uh, and uh, he's got his uh, phone ready on time lapse to record this uh, event. We, we were kind of chatting this morning and thought, gosh, you know, the Corinth Canal must be one of those bucket list things for uh, a, a number of sailors, which well, certainly is for us. Uh, quite exciting. Yeah, and it's for Adam too. <laughs> One of the big bridges coming up, the big road bridges that go over the top. It is quite extraordinary. I do not know how cruise liners, small cruise liners, albeit, get through here uh, because it is really narrow. We are doing, uh, how many knots, Adam? 5.1. 5.1 knots through the canal, but we're only using 700 watts on each motor. So we have got one hell of a tidal flow running through here and you can actually see it in the water uh, which is propelling us along which for an electric boat is just really really good news but look at that just towering above us there's a truck going across it's it's actually spiritual it really is what are your thoughts adam i'm deeply zoned out <laughs> and this is one of my bucket lists so fabulous 5.2 knots wow <laughs> <laughs> So this is quite a moment for us on Hop Yacht because obviously the first Hop Yacht ever to transit the Corinth Canal, but it just might be one of the first all electric boats to transit the canal. And uh, we're just reveling in the fact that this is absolutely silent. In fact, we can hear the noise of the cars and this uh, boat behind us, which insists on having its deck mounted uh, VHF speaker blasting all the way through. Uh, we've given him a death stare, but he doesn't seem to have gotten the message. <laughs> But have a look at these amazing walls, the way it's been cut. And you can see why it probably does collapse every now and again. And they do have to close the canal because it's almost like a sandstone, uh, just quite extraordinary. And here you'll see they've actually built up blocks that are being undermined uh, by presumably the current running through the canal. So have a look up there. They've actually carved the name or some kind of name. I'll get a translation of that later on into the side of this extraordinary cut that they've done and uh, here's this retaining wall. I mean, it, it really is quite something because these are all concrete pillars that they've put in and uh, it's a very large section. So we can see why they're closing the canal each season and then reopening it just for when the busy yacht season happens. Well, here we are at the absolute exit of the canal. And we've now crossed from the east side of Greece to the west side of Greece. And we've done that in about 45 minutes of transiting the Corinth Canal. So we just arrived in Galaxidi, this lovely little village in the Gulf of Corinth after a long uh, motor sail from uh, Kiatu. Uh, it's been a long day and uh, we had to smile as we tied up. This very earnest looking chappy came over to us and um, handed us his business card. And I don't know if you can read that, but he sells diesel. You should have seen his face when we told him it was all electric.
Well, it's uh, 6.54 a.m. And uh, we're leaving the lovely little town, village of Galaxidi. Some beautiful yachts here. Uh, really nice anchorage overnight, very calm. And uh, this morning light on these yachts, mainly privately owned yachts here, absolutely lovely. Stayed next to a couple from Holland who uh, very kindly unplugged their electricity to allow Hop Yacht, the all electric yacht, to plug in to get ourselves up to 100% for this next leg of the journey. And we're heading off now to an island, I can't remember the name, I'll post it on the link, but uh, it's uh, about 16, 19 nautical miles away, gotta look at the chart. Well, here we are in this gorgeous little harbour uh, of Naf Paktos, uh, which is about five nautical miles from the bridge that will take us from the Gulf of Corinth into the Ionian Sea uh, tomorrow morning. But uh, we're quite excited about being in this little harbour, not because of the buzz and the atmosphere of the harbour. It's a very ancient harbour and uh, dates right back, I think, to the Ottoman uh, Empire. Uh, but we're excited because we're in it. Um, and. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the uh, camera around and show you the fact that um, there are a whole bunch of boats out there moored out there and the reason they're out there is because the harbour entrance is quite silted up and so none of them can get in and so they're going to sit out there tonight and I hope that's a comfortable night for them because there will be a bit of swell running later if the wind gets up but we are inside and why are we inside? Because we're little and we only draw 0.69 of a meter so we were able to come in cautiously uh, just uh, in case the sand bank was a little higher than we thought but here we are and uh, I'll just pan around the the harbor for you and uh, let you have a look at this beautiful beautiful harbor it's a um, holiday weekend here in Greece so that's why there's just loads and loads of people here so we'll give you an update uh, tomorrow as we pass through the bridge can't wait for that it really signifies a, a milestone on this voyage and uh, really looking forward to turning right or starboard uh, and heading up into the Ionian for the first time Well, we're finally uh, through the uh, bridge, the Rion Bridge at Patras. There it is, you can see it in all its splendor. It's just a magnificent piece of architecture, which means that we've now crossed from the Gulf of Corinth into the Ionian Sea. And now we're gonna turn to starboard and start heading up towards our destination. Isn't that just beautiful? Well, we pulled out of a place called Ormos Axio uh, this morning, moored there overnight. Uh, very nice. Uh, we got a mooring boy. You, you pay for it, but it gives you that secure feeling, so you sleep well. And a uh, little restaurant, and they come and pick you up in a water taxi and take you to the restaurant. And all very uh, sort of nice country feeling to it. Uh, it's a little caravan park as well. And now we're heading to, um, quite excited about this, we're heading to George's. Uh, uh, George's is apparently uh, in Calamos uh, and uh, 
He is the unofficial harbour master, and uh, if you get hold of George, he organises Murray, and he's going to organise, hopefully, uh, he's going to organise electricity for us. Unfortunately, not a great deal of wind, so uh, we'll see how the morning pans out. If ever you need a proof that Hop Yacht fits into the same berth as a monohull, here we are, tucked neatly between two very nice boats. We think the one in the middle is nicer. just departed the marina, uh, the town Key, as it's called, uh, which is actually a really nice marina now. The sunsail appeared to have put in all the pontoons, and uh, you can stay there during the week, uh, but you can't be there at weekends when all the uh, charter boats come in. Uh, and it was free of charge, which was very nice. You'll see a queue of boats behind me. Uh, we're first in line to go through a bridge ahead of us, and I'll just turn the camera around. Two um, entrance ways for the cars are opening, and I'm not sure, I think this bridge actually then rotates on its own axis uh, and opens up two channels for incoming boats and for us as outgoing boats. Well, we're through the bridge, and you can see the convoy of vessels coming through there. We were excited about being able to deliver our first hop yacht from Piraeus to Prevesa to its first owner, Sebastian Coomer. A bit like owning your own first electric car, we were naturally a little bit anxious about how the boat would perform, how far we could go if the wind died and we had to motor long distances. And the wind did let us down, actually it let us down often. So we took it easy, sailing short hops like a typical sailing holiday where no one's in a rush. And in reality, with even a great deal of motoring and lots of motor sailing, it provided a unique opportunity to step out of the role of being yacht builders and experience firsthand what an extended voyage would feel like on a hop yacht. Sebastian actually joined us for the second half of the voyage and he's a very experienced sailor, but this was his first taste of being on an all-electric yacht and he loves it. We could have done this trip in half the time, but <laughs> why would you want to? In the 10 days, we covered 208 nautical miles and we plugged into shore power only twice. Despite many days being overcast, uh, the solar panels and the battery capacity proved that an all-electric hop yacht will deliver well beyond our original expectations, quietly changing the way people sail. <laughs>